Hi, everybody. So we are back with Bob Claxton, and this is the part two of Bob speaking to us about leadership in crisis. And Bob is an international executive coach and trainer with the John Maxwell Group. So he has a lot of excellent advice. He has years of experience being a leader and just coming alongside of businesses and non for profits, churches, and things like this. So. Uh, yeah, so please, Bob, enlighten us further with some of your, your uh, crisis leadership knowledge. Awesome. Thanks again, Tara, for having me. Uh, we, one of the things we talked about in the last session were the three traps that leaders can get into. And, but I also want in this session to talk about the three advantages that, that leaders have in a crisis. And so there are three things that I think every leader has the opportunity to seize, or, or these are things that can can take place. One is it initiates change. A crisis will kick you or your organization out of your comfort zone and it will demand you to pivot and adjust. I mean, just think about all of the things that have happened during this COVID experience. Businesses have changed, governments have changed, law courts have changed, churches have changed. They've had to adapt to the constraints of being under uh, what we need to know as regulations from COVID-19. Most people didn't know what a Zoom room was before March the 15th. What if, in fact, if you will mention Zoom to them, they would probably think of a Mazda commercial because all they heard there was Zoom, Zoom. But again, we've had to we've had to change. And traditionally, businesses that were resistant to employees even working remotely, they had to do this to make it happen so that their business could carry on. And one of my clients, uh, the business he works for. He had, they had to buy 60 laptops just so that his team could go and work remotely. But, you know, my prediction here is that, uh, and I think other uh, leaders believe this as well in the business world, uh, business will never be the same again. You know, to the surprise of most business owners, employees who work from home are just as efficient and engaged as they were when they were walking down the hallways of their downtown offices. So it's an interesting thing how it has initiated a whole lot of change and it's, it's forced us, for those of us that are not, uh, not comfortable with changing, to change. The second thing is it has increased our focus. A crisis will help people cut through the fluff in their life and in their business. You see, COVID-19 exposed what really matters. One of my mentors who works primarily on the road admitted that he spent more time in the last two months eating dinner with his family that he has in years. Now think about that. Relationships matter. Families matter. Health matters. You see, what we were convinced or even told was essential to live, work, and to be in business and doing business, we, discuss, we discovered that they were possible activities that just, you know, we would appear to be doing every day to, to look like we're busy. In fact, one of the phases I have, phrases I haven't heard during COVID-19 is, I'm so busy. I haven't heard that in two and a half months. Why? Because people now have time. They have margin in their lives. And some of my friends have been making decisions based on the fact that now they have margins in their lives that they're going to carry on post-COVID to continue on with those margins. The third thing, and I think is the one is actually the most fun. Well, it's, it's, it's sad and it's also very, very good, is that it identifies leaders, thirdly. Let me ask you, Tara, a question. During the crisis, this crisis, have you been able to spot a good leader and a not so good leader? Of course you have, of course you have. You see a leader's like an orange. You don't know what's inside until you squeeze it and what is on the inside will come out. And what we've been seeing is we've watched many, many leaders get up in front of televisions, television cameras and then they've been giving us updates on a daily basis that it, a crisis will reveal their ambitions. It'll reveal their motives. It'll reveal their priorities. I know some businesses who the executive team actually sat down and said, okay, we're, we're, think about what kind of a rollback you need to take in the next little bit so that we can keep everybody on board. And then I know other companies where the executives have just said, well, let's just cut the people and keep our salaries. That's sad. Um, but it also reveals our character. And so uh, one of the things that I do is I, I use the Maxwell method of disc to help people understand who they are and who they're working with. 
And one of the things that makes it different from other disc, disc instruments is it has a third graph. And the third graph is the money graph, I call it, because it says who you are under stress. So what I want to share with you today, right now, who you're seeing on your staff, who you're seeing as your friends, maybe even some of your family members, you're seeing who they really are because when you are under stress, you default to who you really are. You can't, you can't mask it. And so not only do you need to believe what you see, but you need to understand that you're seeing who a leader really is or who really isn't a leader. And, and for some of us, that's both sad and it's also good. But there's a second part of this. And it also means that it reveals not only who is a leader, but it also may identify somebody on your team who could be a leader because during this experience, they've actually stood up and they've taken action. They've taken an initiative. And what I call is, I say that the leaders popped in front of your eyes because they were once dormant because they didn't have a position of leadership. But in this crisis, they've taken leadership and maybe their manager who is supposed to be the leader is, a, you know, is now full of fear and paralyzed you realize that you, had a, you have a leader in the making that's just down the road. And that's one of the things that I love working with is watching people pop in front of us and crisis make that happen. So leaders step up when others panic and they're afraid to act. So those are the three things I think are advantages for us. Yeah, that's beautiful, Bob. I really appreciate you taking some time um, to speak to to me and, and to share this with, with the audience. Um, I'm excited for my friends who are entrepreneurs to listen to your words. Um, uh, those people who have already opened up in phase one and then some of my good friends who are opening up in phase two, I think this is just so timely um, for us as we wanna come alongside of the community. And thank you so, so much. And I will, again, I'm going to link Bob's information in the description below. So if you want to talk to him about leadership or, you know, ask him for some sort of contact or anything like that, Bob's, Bob's an accessible guy. So thank you, Bob. Thank you, Tara. Appreciate it.